Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups, My Breeder Supply. So I've done a number of videos over the last year or so on genetics, and so I'm gonna do another one that's gonna be hopefully a bit more thorough. Um, but remember that these videos that I do, they're not scripted in any way, shape or form. They're a one take deal, and so they're not the most slick presentations that you've ever seen. But what we're really after here is content as opposed to you know, the best production. So, you know, um, I apologize for sometimes our professionalism is not as good as it could be, but again, you're just looking at me with a cell phone looking at me and that's it. So non-scripted, here we go. All right, so I'm just gonna talk very briefly about how all this goes about. So this is really, I want, I'm, I'm a Frenchy Bulldog guy. What I talk about is generally true of dogs in general, but not absolutely true of every breed that's out there. There are some differences in terms of color genetics between different dogs, but certainly for French Bulldogs, English Bulldogs, Bullies, all of those dogs, this is gonna be true, and generally true of other dogs, but not completely. All right, so what the heck's going on? So the first thing is, is that we're talking about DNA. This is the material that every living creature has inside every cell of its body. The DNA that you have in every cell determines what kind of an offspring you will produce when you are mated to another person, another creature of the same species, what you'll produce. And basically what's going on here is every cell in your body has some chromosomes in it. And those chromosomes are made up of strands of DNA or helixes of DNA. And when two creatures, creature A, <clears throat> mates with creature B with its own DNA. What happens is this double strand helix of DNA unfurls and one strand hooks up to one strand of the other one that makes up the new offspring. And here's the new offspring. And there it is. And there are proteins that link these two together that are the DNA. Now, there are something like in a dog 23,000 DNA, uh, DNA pairs that make up uh, a, a dog. And because there are so many of these, every single dog that we produce is unique. It has a slightly different DNA profile than other dogs, unless they are identical twins. So this two creatures, could produce two or more, one or more offspring, and each one will have different sets of protein pairs that it got from those two parents. So this creature here is unique and different than this creature here. It may not be vastly different, but it is different. And so this is the fundamentals of what the heck's going on there. And this is why when the crime is committed, that they can look at the DNA that they find the crime scene. And that DNA is unique to just typically one person in the whole world. Now, there's the preamble to it. So now let's talk about the specifics about what's going on. So I'm gonna, every French Bulldogs, they have a number of different genes that are to do with coat color. Um, and I'm just gonna start talking about one to get rolling with this. We're gonna talk about the blue gene, just to get rolling with this, the blue gene. The blue gene is called the dilution gene. It's not really a blue gene, it's a dilution gene. I can't spell dilution right, dilution gene. It's a dilution gene. And what that does is it modifies other genes to make them appear more muted. And so a black dog that has also got the blue gene appears to be more of a blue-gray color because the black has been muted down or diluted. All right. So that gene is expressed as always the capital letters are the dominant and it gets one, each dog gets one copy from one parent, one copy from the other parent. So the parent can have, the parent also has two genes, it's gonna give one of the two out. It can be this, that is a non-blue dog, non-blue. Or it can be this, that is a blue carrier. It has one copy, blue carrier. And by the way, that is exactly the same as that. There's no difference. It's not, it's not, 
but we always put the capital letter first. Or it can be this, and that is a blue dog. All right, so there it is. There's the blue dog. All right. So there are three possibilities that a dog can have. It could be not a blue dog, a blue carrier, or it could be a blue dog. All right. So now we're going to start introducing you to what's called a Punnett square. This is the thing that we use to try and help us decide what the hell happens when we put two dogs together. So we draw a square, <clears throat> and we put a vertical line and a horizontal line. And typically we put the male on the top and the female on the side, but the order is irrelevant. So here's possibilities. We have two dogs, both of which are non-blue dogs. And what we do is we say this and this makes that square there. That's one offspring. This and this makes that square there. This and this makes that square there. And there we go. So what have we got? We have 25% of the dogs are non-blue, and 25% are non-blue, and 25% are non-blue, and 25% are non-blue. The whole mix of that makes a non-blue dog. Right, really simple. All right. So now we're going to change this up, and we're going to make this a blue dog on the side over here. What happens now? Well, we go back to our Punnett square, and we end up with that. Every single dog in that letter is a blue carrier. Those dogs can then go on to produce blue dogs, and we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. But basically, every single puppy that's produced will be a blue carrier. Let's make something slightly different. We're gonna make this dog a blue carrier, and we'll make this dog a blue carrier as well. Now what happens? <clears throat> this one gets DD. This one gets big D little D. This one gets big D little D. This one gets little D little D. There's our blue dog. We get one quarter of a litter, because we've got one in four. One quarter of a litter has got nothing to do with blue. One quarter of a litter are blue dogs. One half, two quarters, one half are blue carriers. There's your Punnett square. So that's something that's going to be referenced a lot when start, people start talking about genetics to figure out what the hell's going on. They'll be talking about Punnett squares. And the Punnett square is just a simple way of looking at one individual set of genes to decide what the outcome possibilities might be. Now, you have two dogs that breed together. Those two dogs breed together. And we just looked and we saw that we get one quarter are blue, one quarter who have got nothing to do with blue at all, and one half that are blue carriers. Does that mean in four puppies you're guaranteed to have one that's blue, and one that doesn't have anything to do with blue, and two that aren't? No, it's just a statistical, statistical thing. It's like if you have three children, how many of those will be boys and how many will be girls? Well, the answer is you don't know, but you know in a general overall population you expect to have as many girls as boys. And also, just because you've had five boys in a row does not mean that the next offspring that you have is going to be a boy or it's going to be a girl. That's what's called uh, posterior probabilities. It's gotten the, the, what happened in the previously has nothing to do with the future outcome. Um, so. Let's look at specifically what's going on with Frenchies, or Bulldogs. So, there are a number of genes to do with colour. Um, most of these genes have, well all these genes have two pairs. And, as in the blue, you have one that can be dominant, and you can have one that is recessive. So the capital letter is always dominant, and the other one is recessive. Right, right. In most, most, not all, but most genetics we're talking about, it takes two copies of the recessive for it to show. It takes a single copy of the dominant to it override the recessive gene, and that then becomes what you see. So we talk about two different things. We talk about phenotypes, phenotypes, that is the physical look of the dog. A dog that is like this is a blue carrier. Will not show blue because its phenotype, its physical thing will be will look non-blue because the dominant gene takes over, non-blue. Its genotype, its genotype 
It is to do with what the underlying DNA is inside that animal. And it is, in this case, a blue carrier. It has a copy of blue. It has to have two copies to show up. There aren't two copies present, so it is gen genotype is that it is a blue carrier. It will not be blue, but it will have the ability to produce blue offspring down the road. Okay. Now this is very important, this dominant recessive thing, because most genes require two copies of the recessive gene to be present for the color to actually express itself. So let's look, I'm going to put up on the side here, and I'm going to go over these individually. I'm going to put over on the side. Some of these genes interact with other genes, most don't. So the blue gene, so blue, blue. Blue is characterized by, the has to be two copies of the non-recessive, of the recessive version of it for it to show up. It has to be a DD dog for it to be blue. Chocolate. Chocolate has to be two copies of the recessive B gene for it to show up. And this is where it starts to get confusing because there's two, two copies of chocolate in French Bulldogs. There is what was formerly untestable chocolate, which 90% of the dogs were, which can now be tested. And then there was the testable version, which is uh, called uh, it's Isabella. So there's two different versions of chocolate. They are unrelated, but they both show up. So you have to have two copies to get a chocolate dog. Um, okay, so then we have cream. And the cream dog has to have two copies of recessive cream, it's the E gene. By the way, the, non, the dominant versions of these, the ones that will not show up, would be written like this. Or any dogs that had one copy would also not show up as those colors. Right. So this is, this is the column that the color shows up. Right. So cream, a little bit more interesting than the other ones in that cream dogs, if, if you get a double E dog, it's like white paint. It covers up all the other genes that you normally would see, like blue or chocolate. They don't show up in a cream dog. All right, more of that here in a bit. Um, okay. Then we have the A locus. The A locus is to do with, it can either be AA. This, I'm going to put this down as A locus because there's three genes that all pair together. There's three genes. You can be AA, it's like a D, we'll make that an A, AA. That is the recessive black. The recessive black makes for a very uniform coat color. There is a Y, a Y, that would be a tan dog. And there is a T, a T, and that makes for tan points. Okay, so you can have, what combinations can you have here where you can have an A, A, Y, you can have an A, A, T, you can have an A, 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 you can have an A, T, A, T, you can have an A, T, A, Y, you can have an A, Y, A, Y, you can have an A, Y, A. Have I missed any out there? No, because I've got the A, Y, A up there already. I have an A, Y, A, T, I think I've got them all. So there's like six, six different possibilities you can have of those genes. So you, there's lots of combinations that the A gene can show up as. And this one here, the, this, is, this makes the recessive black. So you have to have those two together. Uh, AAT and ATAT make the 10 points. That makes the AYAY makes for a fawn dog. And typically ATAY and AAY make for fawn dogs too, but it's not clear on those. Okay. All right. I'll get rid of that. <clears throat> so we've got the A locus. The A locus is a combination of all this lot. They make up for the recessive black tan, tan, tan dogs and tan fawn dogs. I call it tan dogs. I should call those fawn dogs. All dogs and ten points. All right. Okay. So now we start talking about um, the. Oh, I missed one thing here. The e, the e locus, the e locus, responsible for cream, is also responsible for a black mask. 
So the other genes that can pop out here are capital EM, capital EM, that's a black mask. Or they can be little EM, little EM, that's maskless. And EM, EM will have, a, have some degree of black mask. So that also marries up on this, on this whole spectrum of the E locus. So just like over here with the A locus, you can only have two genes present. Likewise, over here, you can only have two genes present. So, for instance, you can have a dog that is one copy of black mask and one copy of cream. Or you can have a dog that is one copy of black mask uh, and, uh, well, let's just leave it like that for now. Again, this, some of this stuff gets a little confusing and I can't cover absolutely all of it right here. Okay, so now we come into two other genes and that is the brindle gene, brindle. And the brindle gene either shows up as KBR, which is the dominant version of it, KBR. Or it shows up as KY. Sometimes it's written as KN. They're the same thing. They're the same thing. So I'm just going to, we're going to call this KN for the, for the, but basically you either have brindle present or you don't. Any dog that has a single copy of, of brindle, it doesn't have to have two copies, will show some degree of brindling somewhere. So this is a dominant gene, this is a bit different. It takes where these genes had to have two copies of the recessive to show up. Brindling is the opposite. A single copy makes it show up. If you want lack of brindle, then the dog has to be KN, KN. It cannot have any copy of brindle at all for it to be a non-brindle dog. So brindling is rather different. A single copy is dominant and it will always show up to some degree. Now, some dogs with a single copy of brindle will show up with brindling all over the place. Other dogs with a co one copy of brindle will hardly show it anywhere, but you're gonna find it probably somewhere on that dog, typically on the back end. All right, and I'm probably gonna to get to the point where you can't see this if I'm not careful. So I'm going to, I'm gonna put this, we'll put Merle right here. Here's Merle. So the Merle gene is like the brindle gene. Um, it just takes one copy of Merle for it to show up. So there's, there's the non-mural, there's non-mural, which is small m, and there's the mural, which is big m. That makes for a mural dog. You never put, you never want to have two copies. You don't want to have this. You can have it, you don't want it. That's a blind, deaf dog if you're not careful. So murals you've got to be careful with. You don't breed murals to murals. You breed murals to non-murals. So, if you end up with a dog that is MM, which most Frenchies are, then that is a non meryl dog. It takes one copy, it's all it takes for the meryl to show up. Let me see if I can see that on screen. So I'm going to stop off here for a second, and I can, good deal. Right. Okay, so. Right, so now we've talked about the various different colors. Let's talk about how these relate to individual dogs and how you might breed them. Okay, so most of these genetic traits we're talking about are independent of each other. So let's talk about blue and chocolate together. So remember that a blue dog is little d, little d, two copies of the recessive gene for it to be blue. And a chocolate dog likewise has to have two copies of the blue. So these two genes are completely independent of each other. You can have a blue dog that is not chocolate, and that would be, um, that would be this here. You can have a blue dog, this is this line right here, you can have a blue dog that is a chocolate carrier, that would be that there. Or you can have a blue dog that's also chocolate, and that would be that there. By the way, that makes for a lilac dog. A lilac dog, some people want to talk about the lilac gene. There is no such thing as a lilac gene. The lilac gene, the lilac dog is a dog that is both blue and chocolate combined. And what happens is, this is a dilution gene which acts on the chocolate gene to make it washed out that ends up with this violet purpley color that is not really convincing. If somebody says, I've got a, you know, a lilac dog, you've never seen one before, you'd expect to be seeing a purple dog. Well, it is kind of a little bit, but it's not dramatic. It's basically a dilution of the chocolate gene. But the point here is that these are independent of each other. You can have a blue dog that doesn't have chocolate, or a chocolate dog that doesn't have blue. 
There's nothing special about lilac that says this is a lilac gene. It's not. Lilac is just simply a dog that's both blue and chocolate. So let's play around with those two things a little bit. And let's just breed some dogs together. So we're going to start with a dog on the top that is a blue dog. And this dog carries one copy of chocolate. And we're going to breed that to another dog that's a blue dog <coughs> that has two copies of chocolate. This is the lilac dog. Oops, spelled lilac right, lilac dog. And this is the blue dog that carries chocolate. All right, we're gonna breed those two together, what do we get? Okay, so we're gonna look at this part right here, because remember, these genes are independent of each other. This gene here, although it might affect the color and the look of the dog, they are separate genes completely. So we're gonna look at the blue, what do we get? Right, so we're going to do a quick Punnett square down here, and then we'll get rid of it. Here's the Punnett square for the DD dog. So what do we get? Well, every single dog in this litter is blue. There's no two ways to that. They have to be blue, because this, this guy here gives one of these two genes out. It always has to be a little D. This dog here has to put one of these two genes out. There's only one choice. It's D. That's what we get. So we know what we've got here. There's no if, ands, or but about it. We have to have that as a blue dog. Remember, we're combining these two dogs together to see what we can produce, and this is what we're producing. We have to produce a blue dog every time. Okay, the chocolate one over here. So back to the Punnett square again. What are our choices here? So we've got on the top, the blue carrier, and on the side, the, dog, the, the, the chocolate dog. What do we get? We get this. Half the dogs, this half right here, are chocolate. Half chalk. Half of them are chocolate carriers. Half are chocolate carriers. So, I'm going to get rid of the Punnett square. I'm going to put it down over the side here. What have we got? We just decided we'd have half of them are going to be chocolate. So here they come. So here's the half of the chocolate. So half the dogs are chocolate. They are babies. And the other half of the dogs, on average, are chocolate carriers. So, what does that end up? A blue dog that's chocolate, it's a lilac. We get half lilacs, there they are. Half the, lilac, half the dogs in the litter, on average, not always, exactly half, but on average, half the dogs are gonna be lilac. And the other half are gonna be blue dogs that carry chocolate. So the other half are blues that carry chocolate. There we go. So now let's, let's, now let's go ahead and expand this. Let's make both of these dogs, I'm gonna get rid of this wording up here so I've got room. Let's make, both of, let's, make, let's make both of these dogs brindle dogs, totally brindle dogs. Well, if you do the Punnett square on that, you can see that every dog has to be brindle. So we get all of these dogs are now brindles. They are, doesn't mean they won't express the color, but it means they'll have some variation striping in their coat. We'll get lilac brindles, and we'll get lilac blues that carry chocolate. Brindles. So now let's make this a little bit different, and let's make one of these a half brindle dog. Got one copy of brindle. Let's make this one no brindle at all. Punnett square on the brindle. What do we get? We've got a KB, KB, KN up here, made it to a non-brindle dog, KN, KN. So we get a KB, KN, got a copy of brindle, a KN, KN, no brindle, a KB, KN, gets a copy of brindle, and a KN, KN. So, just with a single copy of brindle, we ended up with a litter of half brindles. This is these ones right here. Just takes one copy for it to be dominant. Half brindle and a half not brindle. That's, so it just took one copy out of the four possible genes, only a single copy, and we got half brindles out of it. So what do we get here? So let's put it that back down to our little, what do we get here? We get half lilacs of which half are brindle and half aren't. And we get half blues that carry chocolate, which half are brindle, and half not. Half 
half brittle, so half brindle, er, half a brindle and half not, half brindle, half not. Right, hope that makes sense. Okay. All right, so they're just out of the brindle gene. Okay, now <clears throat> let's add a tan point gene to this whole equation. So we're going to make this dog AT, AT. That's a tan point dog. And this one's AT, AT. And interestingly enough, when you put brindle in with tan points, it wipes the tan points out. You don't see them very well. If you don't have brindle, a tan point shine like a new penny. So what do we get now? So the answer is, is that Punnett Square again on the AT, AT business, here it is, AT, 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 and all the dogs get tan points. Every dog gets AT, AT, every dog gets tan points. <clears throat> the sad part about this is if you introduce a brindle into it, that one copy of brindle we showed before, this one copy of brindle here negates the tan point showing up. All right. Let's add another gene to this. Let's add the moral gene. Let's make this dog here have one copy of moral. And we'll make this dog here has no moral. What do we get? Just like we saw in the brindling, moral is a dominant, it's one of those, there's just two genes, it takes one copy to be dominant. That's moral and brindle. So here we've got the moral dog, has one copy, makes it moral, to the non-moral dog. What do we get? We get a moral dog, we get a non-moral dog, we get a moral dog, we get a non-moral dog. Half the puppies are moral, half the puppies aren't. So what the heck does this amount to on this whole screen we've got? And you can see it starts to get more complicated because now what we've got is we've got blues, of which half are chocolates or lilacs, and half are uh, carriers, the chocolate carriers, right? That's where we were before. Then we get one in four of these dogs, one quarter is not brindle. And three quarters show some degree of brindling. And they are all got tan points. And half the dogs, half the dogs are merles. And half the dogs are not merles. And I just screwed that up because that's half brindle. I'm sorry. In that situation there, that's half brindle. Half brindle. Okay. All right. So, what would we get here? So, this is, you've got to look at a whole population of dogs to be able to get this out. We've got, uh, let's see, a half and a quarter and an eighth. If we looked at eight puppies, if we looked at eight puppies, what would we expect to get? They will all be blue, of which one eighth of them would be lilacs that don't have brindle, that have tan points and are moral. One eighth of them would be lilac dogs that don't have brindle, that have tan points, that are meryl. And, and so it goes on. You've got to look at all of these together to see exactly what you get in a whole population. Okay. I've probably got everybody thoroughly confused at this point. This is not the kind of thing you're going to pick up in half an hour. This is the kind of thing you have to work on to be able to really get a handle exactly what you can expect to get. All right, so let's add another one to this. Let's add the cream gene. So now we're gonna have a, a, a one dog that is one copy of cream, doesn't show up. The other dog is a cream. Remember that two copies of cream makes for a cream dog and it covers up everything else. This dog here is unusual because despite the fact that it is a chocolate blue dog without brindle and tan points, it looks to be a cream dog. Actually, a cream dog that is both blue and chocolate is a lilac dog. So this is actually what's called, uh, that's a lilac, and by the time you add the cream to it, it becomes a platinum. So 
So <clears throat> we call this dot a platinum. So if we breathe these together, let's look at the Hyatt square for these. So we have the non, the cream carrier dog, bred to the platinum. <clears throat> One half will be cream, there they are. And half will be cream carriers. So when we put these two dogs together, <clears throat> get rid of this now. We all get, I should have wiped off the other line than I did. Unfortunately, I wiped off the other line. That was a mistake. But basically, what we're going to get now is, is we're going to get a litter of half creams and half not creams, of which half of them, well, all of them will carry, will be blue. Half of them will carry chocolate. Half of them will be brindle. All of them will have tan points, and half of them will be moral. So, you can see this gets fairly complicated. All right, now we're going to add another gene to this. We're going to add the fluffy gene. So that is designated as coat length. So it's either got a long coat or it doesn't have a long coat. And we'll put this to a dog that has a long coat. So we'll go to the Punnett Square. The fluffy carrier, make a little L, bred to the fluffy dog, produces a fluffy, produces a fluffy carrier, produces a fluffy, produces a fluffy carrier. One half, one half. There they are. One half will be fluffy, have a long coat, and half will be fluffy carriers. So what do we get? So now we get a litter of half fluffies and half fluffy carriers, of which half of them are cream, of which all of them are blue, which half of them have the chocolate, uh, chocolates or, or chocolate carriers, of which half of them are brindle, of which all of them have tone points, of which half of them are moral. <laughs> there you go. So you can see it gets fairly complicated predicting exactly what's going on. And if you actually try to work out the percentages of what you'd get in a litter of like 16 dogs, I can tell you it's not difficult to do, but it's not obvious immediately. Um, okay, so I'm now going to introduce you to the solution to this, and that is, is on your Android or your, or your iPhone, you go get the coat color calculator. Cal you cal calculator. I suppose I spelled it wrong. And you put out the word in the word Bakia, because those are the people who put it together. If you put that in, you will find that out. It's great. It's specifically for Frenchies, but it lets you put in the genetics of two parents. It'll show you. Uh, um, a picture of what the dog will look like and then it'll show you all the percentages of all the, of all the puppies that you can produce. I mean, if you want to learn about this, this thing here, you can go play around with this little application right here and it will really help you understand what's going on. Um, okay, I'm trying to think if I've missed anything else out here as a first round of this. I think that's probably enough for this particular uh, video. Um, So, you know, you can predict quite a bit about what you can expect color-wise from the puppies you produce if you know the DNA of the parents. If you don't know the DNA of the parents, you can infer a lot of this based on the coat colors that you see and puppies that were in their litter and the parents that produced those puppies. And I think that's another video that we'll talk about that. So lots of you will have quite a bit of information or maybe all the information on your dogs and with that, you really can get a really good handle on what you can expect to produce. Some of you will have only a limited amount of information, and in many cases, you can still get a lot of information out as to what you can expect. So I think the next video is going to be on how to figure out what colors might be present based on the puppies in the litter and the parents that produce them, and then how you can go about finding out by doing some genetic testing to find out exactly what you've got. So thank you for watching the video. I hope I haven't confused you too much. Um, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If I've got things badly wrong, let me know. Uh, and we'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to us. Uh, most important thing of all is be nice to your puppies. Bye, everybody.